Welcome guys, it's Andy here from D6 Evolution. I'm here with Lewis and uh, this is going to be the first in our videos talking about more sort of general concepts in competitive 40k. Like I've been doing a lot of videos on the smaller things, how you can do nice little tricks with units, but these, this video series is going to be more about the overarching themes about how you can play well. And in this specific video, it's going to be how do you write a competitive army list? Um, so I brought along Lewis. Um, Hello. You've recently just come across uh, off some wins, haven't you? Tell us about uh, that, buddy. I, I, yeah, I won. Uh, it's an RTT series, uh, uh, a local tournament, which is in Luton. A great bunch yeah. of guys. Um, good, good tournament scene. Um, yeah. Got quite a few good players there, to be fair. Um, yeah. Simon Pridis, who came second, in, uh, to be fair, he's probably a better player than I am. Uh, yeah. he, he just won Battlefield Birmingham this year. Um, so there's, there is some good players that come, you know, occasionally. But we have a series across the whole year, and uh, yeah, I was six games, six tournaments across the year, um, and I came out with a win. So. Yeah, that's that's really good, and um, you, you're you're always very creative with your list. So I thought you'd be really good to to talk to him about this one. Whereas I'm I, I'm not so good with list writing. I'm, I'm more about playing the game. But you've got some really good ideas when it comes to lists. Yeah, it's my favourite bit of the game, to be honest. Um, I because I don't have as much time as I like to play, especially with a new baby at the moment. Um, I, I spend a lot more time sitting with my phone and my computer and reading up and writing yeah. lists than I do actually play. So <laughs> I probably have more practice with that than anything, to be honest. That's cool, buddy. So let's let's dive straight into it and let's get started, okay? Yeah, absolutely. So I've basically broken it into uh, various points that we want to cover um, under sort of topics. So we're going to start with establish your goals. Um, I think it's pretty important. You've got to decide where you are as a 40k player and where you want to be. Yeah. Um, so, for example, if you lost every game, you just want to win that one game, <laughs> in which case probably do just pick up a netlist. <laughs> you might be able to win a game. Uh, do you want to, you know, are you going three and two and you want to go four one at a, at a uh, GT, do you want to come top three at an RTT? Because yeah. different goals will establish what you want to be doing with your list and how powerful it needs to be. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good starting point. It depends what restrictions you want to put on yourself. Do you want to play pure armies? Do you want to play allies? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And it's just being realistic about what you're going to achieve if you do that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you've never played a game of 40k and you want to win an RTT, you're probably unlikely to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> well, you've got some some <laughs> well, some people do. Um, but yeah, establish establish your goals um, and set, set yourself an objective. I want to, like, I mean, two years ago, I, I really wanted to win an RTT. Um, so I just set myself that tar target. I wanted to come at least in the top three. Um, from going to top in the top 10, I wanted to move that up into podium position. So I was dead set focused on that um, and that will establish what you want to do so I guess the next point then pretty obviously is to choose your faction yeah um, but I think with that it also comes to play style so Andy give us a couple of uh, the general sort of play styles with factions that uh, you know okay. that synergize well together so basically you've got you've got armies which just want to kill everything have amazing board presence and just table your opponent um, yep. so if you and you've got to really think is that your sort of play style it's my play style. I love doing that. Um, where it's the complete it opposite. <laughs> it's the complete opposite of your sort of play style you normally yeah. go for. Yeah, um, I must admit though, I've been trying some Eldar recently, and I can I can see why. <laughs> you can see why people love Eldar. <laughs> so yeah, so you've got your your basic ones are kill everything. So your Eldar shining spear lists. You've got your never die lists. So things like Nurgle is the classic, isn't it? Yeah. Or a million cultists. Yeah. Who are just going to sit there and be on all the objectives, and you know what? By the end of the game, no matter who's killed stuff, you're still going to win. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Um, what other sort of lists are you thinking of? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, there is a even in that you've got two differences. You've talked about like a, a cult list. Well, that's like a horde list. Do you want to yeah. play with a thousand models? Like <laughs> some people really don't. I must admit, I started playing a lot of horde lists, but then going to a tournament where you're just taking you know like five planes, which I was doing with the Eldar, and you turn up with like you know just one case, it's it's a different experience. So you know, or playing knights, you just play like three to five knights. It's a very different experience to playing horde. Yeah. If you play horde a lot, it's really taxing on you. Like mindset, you're always trying to move every little thing individually, and you have to play really quickly. It's a lot more relax just to play three nights and just be like that's dead that's dead so all of that's really important if you're someone who gets stressed and anxious and, and gets tired quickly and can't have the endurance that 40k needs mm -hmm. over like a two-day event then don't take like 200 boys it's, it's gonna yeah. be a pain yeah and you, to a certain extent you've got to work out how quick a player you're going to be as well because if exactly. you're like, i'm not the quickest player and actually yeah jet bike suits me fine actually but yeah, yeah, and there's medium lists like exactly that's a good example of a medium list. You know, something that hits hard, can table people, um, doesn't have a lot of models, but also you know isn't just a three model. You know, yeah, you know, and you, okay. you you've also got to think how forgiving a list is for mistakes. So if you're just starting yeah. out in the game, knights yeah. are fantastic because you know what you can't really go too far wrong with them. Yeah, they're, they're very, 
you know, yeah, you will, it, your it your army opposite. will melt if you put a foot yeah. on. Yeah, I mean, that, that's uh, just one of those things to touch on really quickly there. You look at the top lists and you look at like, you know, uh, the Inari list that's been banded around that Nick Brown plays and that. That requires such a high skill cap to play yeah. that if you just netlist pick that up and think you're going to win tournaments, you won't. Yeah. As soon as you lose one of your spear units, you're screwed. And so that's yeah. maybe if you're like, at, you know you're coming top in the middle tables and you want to start winning, I don't think the Inari list is for you. Yeah, I mean, I've my custodian should lose to that every time, but I've beaten that list a lot uh, just yeah. because as soon as people make a mistake, it's it's game yeah. over for them. Yeah, for first tournament in the series uh, that I just uh, this, this went on this uh, year, I was playing uh, World Easy's Brigade, and it was when Yanari had just won whatever it was, um, LVO. And uh, I played three Yanari games in an RTT, and I won all of them. Uh, so I won two of them, lost one of them. But the people just had no idea how to play. And like yeah. it was just easy mode. Like, as soon as you kill a unit, they're like, oh, I've lost now. And it's like, yeah, you've got to play well. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah, was just absolutely. with like, Berserkers. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so I think yeah, you, know, know your play style, know yeah, how know your, forgiving your you, your yeah. army you want, and it's I, I, it's not a bad thing to have a forgiving army. In fact, that should be a no. positive thing. You shouldn't just have yeah. a an unforgiving army thinking you're this yeah. elite player and then <laughs> just yeah, lose your games. Exactly. You will you will get there and you will get better and then you you will start to bring more sort of skill cap into your game. But start yeah. off with something that you can play well. Um, okay. And on that point as well, it's always important to play a faction you actually like. Like I've moved to Eldar recently. I used to collect Eldar before and I really enjoy it. But I just love Chaos so much more. And I kind of got bored of playing Eldar now. So all of the experience in, that I've had in playing that list and playing that army, it's kind of down the drain now because I'm going to move away from it. So choose something that you're going to like, you're going to stick with, and you're going to play a lot, and you yeah. will get one of the best players of it. Um, yeah. And just to bring that into um, context, the guy won, I think it was Adepticon with the Nurgle list. That is a guy who was playing like the Blight Lords and stuff. That's a guy who just loves that Nurgle. As far as, I don't know the guy at all, but from far from what I've read and heard, he just always plays Nurgle. He's always found different ways. He just knows that army inside out because he's been playing for years. That's really important, you know, yeah. there's no substitute for experience. So. Yeah, play testing your army, you'll just get miles better at it. Playing against different yeah. matchups and just having, once you play that matchup, you know what you're going to do. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And having a strategy That's going massive. to it. All stuff, we, all stuff we will cover in later videos. Yeah, yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, yeah absolutely. But there is no um, substitute for just playing games. Yeah, um, exactly. So I think the next thing, once, you, once you've decided on your faction, once you've decided on a basic sort of concept for a list about are you going to be trying to table your opponent is understand your win conditions so um, important yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so you, you, yeah go yeah, on no. well, i was going to say you before you start a game you need to know exactly how you're going to win that game yeah. yeah so if you're playing eldar and you think you're going to win it by holding all the objectives you know unless you're tabling your opponent turn one turn two you're probably not going to do that um you really got to be tabling them to to win uh, yeah. the, the, the Eldar plane list I played, you know, I could get tabled back, but generally I'm tabling people turn one, turn two. Come the end of the game, because I haven't got many units that score, I haven't got a very high score, so it's table or lose, basically. Mm. Now, normally that list tables. But <laughs> and obviously, you, 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 that, that's got to factor into the mission you're playing as well, because your yeah. win conditions can change. Um, and that's something yeah. we're really going to cover a bit more in a, a later video. But, yeah. for example, my custodies list, it can either table people, or if I'm playing against something like knights, I can't table knights, so therefore you've got to think, can I, can I outscore people? Yeah, and it's exactly. just understanding what your list does well. Like your Nurgle list was amazing. It just outscored everyone. Yeah, yeah. As long as it didn't get tabled. So then it then it's quite the opposite. I've got to make sure that I've got ways that I won't be tabled. Yeah. I have been tabled once with that list, but only once. Um, most of the time, I've always got some character left low, alive somewhere <laughs> <laughs> that manages to keep himself alive. Um, and, and turn five rolls, then it ends the game. And then yeah. I've got like six points and they've got 40 or so. And that's how you win. So yeah. um, it does really, really important. And that obviously links into the faction and the play style that you've chosen as yeah. well. So yeah. Yes. Pro tip: Don't get tabled. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably you heard it here first. <laughs> don't get tabled. Score the objectives. Kill the opponent. Okay. That, that's, those are the win conditions. Right. <laughs> Choose okay. which ones are yours. So let's get down to the nitty gritty now. Um, yeah. So I've I've decided I want to play Eldar, for example. Mm -hmm. Where okay. do you start when you're building a list? Do you you start around a combo? Do you start around a unit? Where what exactly do you do? So it depends on your. Um, on your skill set with that army and what you know about it. Um, mm. To be honest, if you've never played the list or an army before, I do think that you know finding the big known combos and starting there is a good starting point because yeah. you'll start racking up wins, getting comfortable with the list, knowing some good stuff, and then you can tweak it from there. Conversely, if you played a list, you know if you played an army a lot, then you'll be looking for the interesting little combos that make mm. it unique, um, and then it's understanding what you know combos and synergies work. Um, but it is good to just start with the core. You know, choose what is the main thing you're going to use. So Yunari is an obvious one. Um, 
Um, if you're going to play Eldar and you want to play Yanari, you're going to start looking at Shining Spears, Dark Reapers. You know, Dark Reapers going to be able to fire twice, Shining Spears can advance and charge, and then also fight twice or shoot twice. That's your core of your list. You start there, and then you're building the components around that. Yeah, um, you, you want to fill in, so. fill in the gaps for bits which are missing. Exactly. So take your list, for example, because um, I know your list has come for a few iterations. So how, how did it start your list? Well, it started, actually, I, I, I copied someone else's list to start with. Oh, this Wait, which is actually start. not... You've not played the studies before, that's how you do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When, when you first start, don't try and reinvent the wheel. Choose, choose someone who's actually played the list before. Like I copied Manny Chimar's list. Um, he's a really good. He was a really good Custodes player. He's since moved on to God knows what. But um, <laughs> but he just ran Custodes with Guard, and that has now become a very obvious combination for pe- yeah. people. But actually, after playing it a lot, I found that there were there was certain there was lacking some things there, and I had to sort of change things up after a while. But the core was three big units of jet bikes. That that was the core. Then you've got to build around. Okay, I need. I need units that can screen. I need units which can score. Um, how do I deal with anti-tank? How do I deal with psychers? Because what I was finding when I was playing that game was actually I would table most people, but then as soon as I came up against Elder, they would doom, jinx the big unit, and then just kill it. Yep. And there's nothing yep. I could do about it. <laughs> yep. okay. so, what, so what did you do? I mean, what was your uh, solution to that problem? Um, really, like you say, just don't get tabled. It's as, it's <laughs> as simple as that. Um, but... What I found actually was I put Sisters of Battle in my list and yep. it seemed to fare better because it, it got more speed to the list so I was on the Reapers quicker. Um, it also gives you a 24-inch deny so I could deny some of the psychic powers to stop them dooming or jinxing me. Um, and also I made my list in a way that um, I could start it off the board as well. Yeah, exactly. So you um, took that problem and you, you took the core of your list and then you built the rest around we call your list which was just a net list and then you built the rest of the list around yeah. solving the problems that you found with the core list. Yeah. So I found a way that you it'll probably get nerfed at some point, but I found a way of essentially dropping units round the, the custodies banner three inches away, which is a stratagem and the sisters of battle, they can essentially you can teleport over to Celestine. Because you can move in your opponent's turn with the stupid little dialogus and uh, you can heroically intervene after moving her like 18 inches. So you can yep. effectively launch your entire army up the board in the safety of Deep Strike and then yep. just go and murder everything. Yeah, yep. brilliant. I, yeah, I found that works really well against tough matchups like Imperial Knights, Yanari. Yep. Yeah, I mean, and there's other things you could have done. I'm not saying that these are it, uh, are good, but if you're struggling with psychic powers, obviously you could bring in a Klexus Assassin. You could play the Sisters of Silence, you know, to get some minus ones. There's things you can do to solve the problems, but you're building around that core. I like my jet bikes. I really enjoy playing them. I've got yeah. a couple of big units, and then how do I make that the best? Yeah. So, yeah, you, yeah you've got to figure out what your list is going to do really well and then just have other bits which can interact in the game. Um, and, and to that, that extent, I always think you've got to have ways of dealing with anti-tank, anti-infantry, anti-psyker, and just be aware that you can play in every part of the game. Yeah. How are you going to screen units? You, you've got to be able to answer basic questions that your list functions in very basic ways. Yeah, um, I, I think we'll, we'll come on to that towards yeah, the yeah, last part because I'm quite, I'm quite, that's a really key point. Um, but I think the first thing to talk about is when you're talking about the core of your list, um, you're normally talking about one, two, or three units um, that absolutely are the game breakers. They're going to win the game for you. And so if you want to do really well at the tournament, uh, we're coming to our next topic now, which I literally call breaking the game. Yeah. <laughs> and I think this is really important. Yeah. If you if you turn up to a, uh, a tournament and you are just playing just all tactical marine squads yeah. um, with a last cannon, one last cannon in each, and uh, with no psychic support, no stratagems, just like index book, you you are going to get absolutely smashed by armies that are going to turn up and going to just outpower you. Um, you know, you just turn up against a, a Yanari list, well, Yanari can fire twice. So it's on that squad of Reapers, it's now double shooting. What, what have you got on your list that can do that? Yeah. You don't. So because, you're going to get beaten. Yeah. Because there, there is essentially, there is a point assigned to each unit, isn't there? Which yeah, is yeah. how G, GW have a basic formula. And through all the buffs in the game, you can essentially break that points combination of what a unit is worth. Because like Absolutely. you say, if a unit's double shooting, it's actually double as effective. Exactly, exactly. And it's the same with reroll hits, reroll wounds, yeah. uh, other psychic powers okay. as well. So, um, the, the, so well. Let, let's use the Dark Angels, for example, because they've, they've got a very basic way of stacking buffs. So the Hellblaster Castle, for example. Yeah. So you start with some Hellblasters. Mm-hmm. Now, they're, they're fairly solid. They shoot the plasma weapons. They're good. 
Now, Dark Angels, you can suddenly you can put a Dark Shroud next to them, so now they're minus one to hit. Yep. Okay. Now you can use a stratagem to, well, you could use Azrael as well to make sure they reroll all hits. Yep. yep. Then you can put a Lieutenant next to them, now they're rerolling ones to wound as well. Yep. Okay. Now you can use a stratagem to increase their damage as well by one, with the weapons of the yep. Dark Age. So all of a sudden, you've got a really, really nice. Uh, Nice sort of force multiplier there. Well, all of a sudden, that hell, those hell blasters, the re rolling hits, the re rolling wounds of one, they're minus one to hit, um, they're plus one damage, and all of a sudden, that, that unit goes from being, yeah, it's all right, to absolutely crazy. That's really scary. Oh, and exactly. obviously, and they have a four plus in run from Asriel as well. I forgot yep. that. that. That's kind of key <laughs> to the whole thing. <laughs> I am a Dark Angels player. <laughs> <laughs> But that, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's taking. A, that's, that would probably be the start of the core of your list. Yeah. yeah. So I really like plasma. I love the Hellblaster models. I think they're awesome. Um, you know, I'm a big Promaris fan. How can I make Promaris work? Well, there's a great example. Give them reroll hits. Give them reroll wounds. Give them environment save. Make a minus one to hit. Now that is a unit yeah. that really should be costed at. Well, I don't know how much is a Hellblaster unit just straight off like ten ten guys. God, those like it's like two hundred. It's probably like two points. Two, two, yeah, it's gonna be something like that. Yeah. Two fifty, two sixty, right? And now it's probably worth. 500, 600 points. Yeah. Like if you had a unit that just had that on its data slate, you'd be like, oh my God, it's amazing. But to point cost it effectively, they would have to make it like 600 points or something. Yeah. Um, so, and then, then you wouldn't take it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you would take something else that you Yeah, because know, actually there's better things for, but you, the value added for that is, yeah. is, is insane. But also, yeah. you've got to factor in that actually you don't get that for free. So I yeah. had to buy Asriel, I had yeah. to buy a Dark Shroud and a Lieutenant. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's what. Probably 400 points. Do remember, those are all bodies, characters, models. They have their own abilities. Yeah, yeah, they, you sure. know, you could just take Kazuya on his own. But, He's a bit of a monster, but you know, you would want to take him in that combo. Okay, but you're thinking, right, maybe, maybe if you've got a unit that shoots twice. But if you needed so much stuff to make that unit shoot twice, yeah, then not why not buy two units? Yeah, exactly. There is there is definitely a payoff there. You know, so um, actually, you've got to balance. Like, if you're going to go in, you're going to do an ultra combo like that. Yeah. There. Hellblasters, for example. I'm not saying it's the most effective thing in the game. Hopefully it is yeah. after chapter approved. Bring Dark <laughs> Angels back. But you've got to factor in how much that combo costs. Because if yeah. you're paying 800 points to get this combo off on a 300-point unit, yeah. Just spend the 800 points on more Hellblasters. Get more, okay, yeah. more models is almost always better, except when the, you can out... Just got, you can outpoint the, the cost of the units. Yeah, so yeah, it costs sure. you like 200 units, yeah. And two would cost you 400 points, but for 300 points, you can get reborn hits and wounds. Yeah. You're getting effectively two units for less points. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about breaking game. That is literally the whole point of this yes. segment is that know when you're beating that algorithm and not just beating it marginally and trying to do some wonky detachments or whatever to make it work, like significantly improving yeah. it. Because the uh, thing, thing I see people using, going back to the Hellblasters, I see them bring eight Hellblasters. They've got Azrael, yeah. they've got Lieutenant, they've got a Dark Shroud. So there's no point in that. You haven't yeah. brought enough Hellblasters to make that buff work. Yeah. Yeah, those Hellblasters would be amazing. But actually, yeah. you spend 400 points more on Hellblasters, you get like three times the number of shots. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, to be honest, like you're going to go in, go all in on one of these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. It's understanding where you're going to get that raw power. Um, buff and it isn't just um i mean we, we went straight into reborn hits and wounds because it's like an obvious thing yeah. um but you can talk about the same thing in in terms of defensive capabilities um things that give you plus one invulnerable saves uh, things like that i mean if you take my nurgle list for example uh, that's exactly what i did i looked at a combo and i said oh it's pretty cool that you can bring models back when you roll uh, a one on on the yep. uh, demonic icon right and i thought okay you call it cool i call it bloody annoying <laughs> <laughs> well in the list in a list whose win condition is to survive and to yeah. and to but, and to basically stretch the game out until you just can't table me and I've scored more objectives than yeah. you, then I need to be able to survive. So I took that and I said, okay, well, sloppy bar wipers, obviously, because he gives you the roll two dice and select the lowest. I've got a one in three chance of bringing my model back or, or D6 models back. And then I said, okay, what's the most highest pointed model in the game that I could do that with? Um, and I went to Forge World, obviously, Pox Riders and Nurgle, 65 points a model, five wounds, uh, you know, five off a model will save. But on a one, you get a model back. So I'm like, okay, I'll do that. That's a great little combo. So now, something that was really designed for like plague bearers to maybe get D6 back, it's now got the potential of bringing back a five wound, like 65 point model. Well, that's so, fantastic. So annoying. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then, and then I look at like other ways of bringing it back. Well, there's a stratagem that allows you to bring a model back for two CP on one wound, and then you can heal them up with a healer. Well, I'm going to take, you know, like perhaps like a great unclean one or a pox pox. Um, 
the box cast, I can't remember what his yeah. name is. Um, you know, because again, you've got the chance to heal it back. So then I'm bringing like two models back. Um, you know, and then the, and then the um, Great Unclean one has got a bell. You know, that you can get it's like a support caster, great unclean one, and on a four plus you get more back. Well, now I've got three ways of bringing back a sixty-five point model out of a unit of nine. So I've got a little death star there, and I've got three ways of bringing yeah. that back. I can bring back like one hundred eighty, two hundred points a turn. That breaks the game. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> That's a point um, that it was not designed to do that, and now you can do that. Yeah, and you've got you to think problem. about how reliable it is as well. So stratagems tend to be very reliable. We've got the cost. Yep. Psychic powers tend to be a bit wackier, probably a yep. bit more powerful, but yep. they. Um, they, but, they're, but they're, the, they're, they're less reliable though aren't they yeah but that's the point of that okay is that the i, I consider that exactly so the, the great and clean one you get a model back on a four plus starts at the beginning of the movement phase so you can use a revolt on it yeah yeah so you've got a very high chance of getting back the the stratagem automatically brings one back i'm using the power to heal it to bring it up to almost four wounds basically um because it comes back with one wound uh, even if because it's still like two cp um and then the sloppy power piper is rolled two dice and select the lowest Again, you can use a reroll on it, so it's like a, um, you know, it's like a one in three chance of getting one back anyway, and then obviously a reroll buffs up to about fifty percent chance of getting one back. So, off across the whole of that, you've got only one psychic power that you have to roll dice for, um, and to be honest, you don't even need to do that. You always bring in, you're pretty much guaranteed to bring those models back. I've got a very high chance to do yeah. it. So it's, it's yeah, it's exactly that. If, uh, to take that point to the extreme, if you are looking at a psychic power that is going to be the key to your list, then you're talking about a dice roll that is really important and that yeah. can be denied. And that has, you, you can you can have ways to get around it. You know, you, you, yeah. you can make that dice roll more reliable, but um, in yeah. the end, you know, that Eldar list can fall apart if they fail their psychic powers. Exactly, actually, exactly. You, you've got to factor that in when you're building your list and thinking, yeah. oh my God, I've got this amazing combo. I just need to roll yeah. a 10 on my psychic dice each each yeah. turn. Yeah, and actually, exactly. over the course of five or six turns, you will fail gonna, that once or twice. Yeah, and you've got to consider what I'm saying. If, I if your entire list is about one unit coming in from deep strike, yeah, and you're like, okay, so what I'm do is coming deep strike, need a nine. Charge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you've got a way to boost that, or, or, even even on an eight, like and it's, it's, with rerolls and stuff, you're still going to fail that like half the time. Yeah, and, you think and if you're thinking a tournament, fail. you're not just thinking one game. You think over a tournament, I have to play five games. At some point, the dice will will spike in the wrong direction, and you will yeah. you will fail. I'm going to fail two or three of them. So yeah. if your entire list is about that one unit that's going to do that one thing that takes that nine plus dice roll on two d six to make it happen, you've got to be thinking you've got a dodgy dodgy list there, yeah. you know, because it's not it won't, it won't hit that win condition. Well, yeah. If I lose that unit, will I will I survive? Mm. Um, and so yeah, yeah. I, I think the other thing to talk about with lists. So we, we talked about breaking the list. It's, I think the other thing to talk about is redundancy in lists as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so your, your list must function and do certain things, like you must have anti-tank, you must have anti-horde, you must have your psychers. But what happens if on the first turn your opponent shoots your one tank and you've got no more anti-tank? Yeah. Okay, that's bad. So redundancy and, and certain, I, I think certain armies do this better than other armies. So the more elite your army is, usually the more they're going to struggle with redundancy, whereas guard, they can bring multiple things to yeah. all do the same job. Yeah. Or, or you, you, redundancy can be dealt with with just um, survivability. So yeah. if your if your entire thing is like your Castellan, that's going to be doing all your shooting. Obviously, you can give it a, 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 an additional invulnerable save, and you can be putting CP into keeping it more yeah. survivable. Um, you know, and then, like you said with the Azrael list, you know, you, you can start giving them minus one to hit and four plus invulnerable saves. So if your Hellblaster unit is the thing that's going to win you the game, you can do. You don't have to have two or three Hellblaster units. You can have one, but just make it so they don't, won't die or that you survive. Yes, but you, you've, you know? you've got to understand that actually, what do I do if that? List that that unit dies, or how yeah. do I prevent that unit from dying if it's key to exactly. certain matchups? Yeah, and it might be put them in a drop bottom, bring them down turn two, or whatever. You know, there, there's there's answers yeah. to that. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. the change the, even with like like ravages right now. If you're if you're playing a, an elder list and you've got the, the three ravages arc on, you know, um, Rit of the Living Muse, standard sort of dark elder, um, black heart detachment. It is if, if you're going to lose those turn one, like guarantee going to lose them. So you're going to play against someone who's got a lot of long range shooting, like Tower, whatever, um, you know, four hammerheads, whatever. You, you know you're going to lose those like turn one. So if you if you don't if you're not guaranteed to get turn one, which you're not, then put them in deep strike. Don't fire them turn one. Bring them down turn two. Because if they survive turn two through to turn three and they do two rounds of shooting, they're going to win the game for you. So the redundancy isn't oh I've got three ravages. The redundancy yeah. is that I'm I'm just going to make sure that they don't die. You know, okay. that there's, there's ways around it. So, so yeah, no, I think. So, that leads me on to one of the key things I talk about when I talk about list design is actually 
talking about survivability, particularly don't get yourself table, turn one. And how are you going to do that? So if you come across a really hard hitting list, say my fire app list I used to have, people would just line up on the board and go, well, hoping and get tabled. Or the custodians, they just line up on the line and go, well, I can roll a whole bunch of four ups, hopefully. If that's your plan, it's not a very good plan. No. Uh, always. If your plan is just, I just hope I'm going to roll ups all the time, yeah. Exactly. No, you, no, you, no. you just got to accept that. And actually, when I used to do that with my custodians, I could lose eight, or, I think I lost nine bikes in one game against Tower my first turn. This is before yep. I learned Tower actually quite good. <laughs> um, Alex Harrison schooled me of what Tower really did. <laughs> so, so actually, you've got to have ways of not getting tabled. So, You've got to either start your army in reserve um, or you've got to have a way that actually if you come across like a heavy assault list, um, they're not so common nowadays, but there's still units which can assault you. I think they're going to come back big time. I really think that. Orcs orcs can do that. Um, Yeah, well, the whole horde will start. There's also things which can still teleport in nine inches away. So like the jump, uh, smash captains, there's there's, there's things which, yeah, there's still things which can do it. Um, And it's about going, okay, if I come across that list, what do I do? So the classic thing that people used to do was have three units of Space Marine Scouts mm-hmm. and, yep. and, and screen which is, out. Which is that, just taking that back to build the core of your list, you start with the core of your list, and let's, we, we're using this example of the Hellblasters here. You start with the Hellblasters and you go, how am I going to keep these from getting um, like charged first turn by Zangors or to jump or whatever? Well, then you go, okay, well, then my supplement to that would need to be three Scout units I can push out and just keep that bubble of anti yeah. And, and you don't need them. to use that every game. Um, yeah. And guys, if you look at some of the tactics video, there is times when you should bloody well not be doing that because it just hands yeah. your opponent the game. But um, exactly. yeah. in, in times when you need it, you've got that facility to go, okay, now your Zango bomb or whatever is starting, you know, the other side of the board again. Yeah. And it, yeah. So instead of losing that game automatically, now they've got a game, you've got a game on your hands. Exactly. So, exactly. So, and you know there's there's loads of ways to do it people still don't i don't think people use things like fortifications enough for example um i, I i've written so many lists that start with a bastion <laughs> because you can I always get text from you what happens if i put this in the bastion it's gonna be the best thing ever <laughs> well the thing is it works both ways so let's look at it as like an offensive thing if i'm playing like um berserkers for example um or i've been thinking about I'm trying to think about possessed or a few other like you know mainly chaos obviously and i want to get them protected first turn but i want to be able to charge first turn i can get 20 which is like the big no like, beefed up you know main unit i wanted to get i can put them in a bastion they can step out three yeah. with the extra inch from the base that's four inches then they can move then they can be warp yeah. times you know and then, then they can get out there they've been protected first turn and it's weird to think i'm gonna play close combat army and i'm gonna start with my close combat units yeah. in a bastion but obviously there's an advantage to that or if, yeah. if you go back to be, like something like the dark angels right raven yeah. like, oh they get a four up in van they're going to be awesome when they advance it's like great if you didn't get first turn you can't advance them yeah, exactly. Well, that's and now it's going to die. So black yeah. knights die immediately because yeah. they don't get first turn. It's like, well, yeah. that kind of sucks, actually. That, let, let's just take that into the example of um, Alpha Legion because they've just changed Alpha Legion now. Yeah. So a good, honestly, a good sort of list. I think it won like the BA a couple of years ago, um, or like a year or two ago. Was um, it was like sixty berserkers or something? It's like tw- two, tw- three squads of twenty, and you infiltrate them all up. Well, obviously you can't do that now, so you have to start in your deployment zone. So you go, well, I've got that nine inch movement. So you go, yeah, okay, I'll get the nine inch movement, and then I warp time, and then I'll get them in. It's fantastic. But then, like you say, once if you don't get first turn, you've just lost all your berserkers. They're just three up. Yeah, you know, regular power on it. They're dead. So you think, okay, that is not a good list. Despite the fact, if I get first turn, it's a disgustingly good list, and it will take yeah, yeah. my opponent. If I don't get first turn, it's an absolutely terrible list. Yeah, and, no and, and all the people say, oh, well, well, if I use that nine inch move, I can just move them behind some cover. It's like that's great if there is cover. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, you have no idea you've... what you're going to come up to. And even so, like you normally, you're going to have like big units and stuff. It's going to be a guy sticking out. Or <laughs> you've always, in, in fact, all this, and this will be a whole other video to be fair. It's always looking through the eyes of your opponent. You think that your opponent's just going to sit there and not do anything, right? So if you're playing against like my dark, my elder dark elder, like I've got like five planes and everything's yeah, yeah. going to fly and moves like 16 inches. Okay, you move them nine inches back behind cover. Well, I just move to the side and now I can see them anyway. Like you cannot hide. You don't think you're going to play against someone who's just sat there and isn't moving. They, they are, you know, they are are going to be able yeah. to get around that so you can't rely on that you need to you need to have things in your skill in your kit in your list that stop every opponent no matter what they're going to try and do uh, and that's what i'm saying bastion is a great example of that because you just put them in a bastion and then you know they, they could be they can survive that first turn um uh, yeah. prepared positions is, is helping that a lot to be honest oh, i love that i love that it's yeah. brilliant yeah. absolutely brilliant but it's, it's just exactly. made vehicles so much more yeah I've been playing it with the um, three rhinos with berserkers in them. I'm just on a world eater binge at the moment. Um, but yeah, rhinos with berserkers in them, prepared positions first time, I'm going to survive, aren't I? Yeah. Uh, 
and if I get first turn, I can just fly it, drive them out. So. Okay, so right, guys. So if you've got your list, so once you've made up your list, you've got to think. You've got to give yourself. You've got to ask yourself some questions about what you're gonna, what things you're gonna face. So what are the key yep. things you, key armies or key concepts you say? Yeah. Can my army beat this? What things do you think of? It's funny thing. It hasn't really changed much, but it's just become way more relevant. I was saying the same thing at the very yeah, start. Yeah, of yeah, it, for sure, for sure. Me right? too. Um, which, which was, can you beat? At that time, it was, can you beat two or three knights Magnus? I think it was. Yeah. I think it was two knights yeah. Magnus, right? But now that's, can you beat three to five knights? Yeah. yeah. It's basically it's polarizing list, isn't it? Can yeah, you beat exactly. these extremes? You can never beat. You can never beat everything, and your list will be somewhere in between. Like, okay, I've got a kind of an answer, but you don't want yeah. to have no answer for it. Okay. Yeah. So if you take always my, want a way to win a game, even if it's really difficult, you still need to have and, a, a win condition. Yeah. So you, exactly. So the, what are the key ones you think about? So it's yeah, knights. So, so five knights. Yep. Yeah, um, straight into horde, 150 boys. Yeah. Um, or you know, 120 playing bearers. Yeah, like sure. that. Yeah. What's next? Um, well, then it's a kind of a bit of a wonky. It's can you survive? Um, yeah. So can you decide turn can, one? Can you survive turn one? So like, against can you survive turn list. one against um, two units of shining spears and a unit of a dark reapers in Ari, yeah. who's been played by someone who can play quite well? Yeah. Um, if you can't survive that, and you're going to get table turn one, then you know it doesn't yeah. matter. Can, the, then, the, the old one was, could you survive Alpha Legion? Yeah, yeah. Could could you survive? It's just can you survive? Can, can you screen right? basically? Yeah, yeah exactly. When, <laughs> Did you forget to screen? Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, that's a really good. Can you just survive turn one? I've used shining spears and reapers, but I could use, um, you know, as I said, zangors. Um, again, boys are there again because of the jump and stuff. Can you survive a turn one alpha strike, mm-hmm. either by shooting or by assault? Yeah. Um, and then the third one is, uh, yeah. Well, I, I put elite armies. And I've used the example of jet bikes because I know yeah. you love them. So can you survive fifteen custodies jet bikes? You know, yeah. and, and some some people just don't have an answer. But actually. Yeah. A lot of people you play nowadays have a very, very good answer. They go, Doom, Jinx, goodbye. Yeah. I um, mean, to be, to, to be fair, let's go back to the battle before we played. I knew that that was an answer that my, I couldn't answer with my list. I knew that going into playing, obviously, on that, um, that uh, battle report that we did, you were yeah. playing uh, Jump Bakes, I'm playing that Nurgle list. I know that list, Nurgle list can beat Knights. I know that Nurgle list is it's, it's okay against boys. It, it kind of, it's just a bit of a slog fest and yeah. score objectives, but it does not, it did not deal with jet bikes i just didn't didn't have an answer yeah. to it but hence why i'm not really playing it anymore mm. but actually like nowadays it's it's getting better again <laughs> yeah, jet bikes aren't around um jet bikes aren't around you know knights are gone down to three well, and stuff so yeah yeah whereas knights for me it's like I, I can beat boys i can maybe be um i can maybe beat the spears list and knights i have to play very differently but i can beat them actually yeah yeah, well, that, let's talk about that because I'm really interested when you said that because I we always we talk a lot and obviously you talk about the custodies and having problems with knights and stuff and I was like yeah I don't really know what the solution is there because I'm just looking in one direction I'm like can you kill them well, I don't think you can kill them they'll kill yeah. you back but then you came up with something great so what, what's your solution because you've been winning against knights so how do you beat them? Yeah. Um, so what I do is that I essentially outscore knights um, there's a great battle battle report on our channel where I'm talking about this but it's basically if you've got a bad matchup. Um, what do you do against it? Um, so for knights, for example, I put all my bikes into reserve and basically I don't come down to turn three because they can't shoot me off. The, I give them first turn, don't come down to turn three. You can't shoot me off the board in two turns. And I just move block everything or just hide out of line of sight into that point. And actually I'm obsec. I've got more models than you. I'll outscore You're scoring you. slowly on the first couple of turns, just trying to keep alive, yeah. get a few points. And, and particularly turn three, four, five, you just start racking up the points. And racking up the points, table. and they'll half table me, but they will not. Yeah. They will not table me. Yeah. Um, but you see, that, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. You've written that into the list, right? You've yeah. got a way to get out of deep strike. You've got a way to survive, yeah. you know, because you've got like little characters and stuff that can hide. You ain't going to get table turn one, turn two, turn three, and then you have the ability to win the game late. That isn't raw power. That isn't breaking the game. That is just. That's just good play, and it, but it's built into the list. The list is designed to be able to do that in the matchups where it's going to be losing. And yeah. that's a well, that's a well designed list, to be fair. So, okay, yeah. So that's, it's way, and it, in those harder matchups, is important to practice it because yeah. what you th- think may be the obvious solution um, isn't sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, we need to, well, obviously this is a whole series of videos we're going to do and we will go into depth about pre-game planning and yeah, matchups yeah. because if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to win that matchup, you, are, you aren't going to do it. If you play against Knights and you haven't got that strategy, you aren't going to beat them, but you've got that strategy, you pretty much are going to beat them. And it's as simple as that. So um, what else do we need to talk about is I, I guess when you're actually practicing those games is uh, what do you do against, uh, what do you do against uh, certain lists? I mean, once you figure out there's a problem with your list, it's about tinkering, isn't it? 
Uh, it is, yeah. Um, I, I mean, it's really just play testing um, uh, and then tinkering from the back of that. As I said at the beginning, there's no substitute for experience, so you have to be able to uh, yeah. you have to be able to just play the list through, play out the matchups. But also, when you're doing that and you're tinkering, don't be afraid to make big changes. Oftentimes, what happens is you get down to the last sort of fifty to hundred points, and you start spending on war gear, and you, you kind of like lock the rest of the list into your mind, and you start looking at the last. Oh, I'll put that there. Or maybe I don't give that the combi bolt. Or maybe I'll give it to him. And you're talking about tiny little changes. And when you're playing the game you're not suddenly thinking well actually once we just got rid of that whole unit right that's yeah. like uh, you know, yeah just, just make big changes every so often and then you'll yeah. you'll figure out what actually works or doesn't work yeah and that's coming from playing the list again and again and again yeah um and just, just taking changes out of it so yeah so yeah that's good right i think that's but, i think that's probably about everything isn't it well just the last oh, thing very on. very last go on give, give us your last tip what's your what's your this last is the thing? most important thing okay is, I, was, I was about to end the video before the most well important yeah, thing, yeah. <laughs> no, maybe the second most, most important thing is play testing second most important thing is just write a lot of lists just yeah. write hundreds of lists get so used to writing lists and, and also writing for your army writing for other armies get interested like the orc codex came out picked it up yeah. started reading I'm never going to play orcs but I wrote like 50 fucking lists for orcs <laughs> because I wanted no, to try I mean, stuff you're, out you're, you're quite good at doing lists um, and <laughs> well, it, I just, it's my enjoying that's the most yeah. I enjoy and if you're not people. so good at doing lists look at forums yeah. look at the competitive yeah. 40k pa yeah. Facebook pages chat to your friends um, yeah. come up with then you get ideas for what are the good lists out there actually yeah. Exactly. Uh, and there's no well, shame. There's no shame in copying the core of a competitive list and then doing your own spin on it, because actually Absolutely. most people have figured out the good combinations. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the other thing about when you get when you write losses, is you start getting used to what things should cost. So, for example, those help blasted unit that we talked about there mm. i've never played hell blasters quite frankly i've never picked up space marine book or the yeah. dark angel book and looked at it but i had a feel for how many points that probably costs yeah because of that stuff now most things in the game like most units they cost about 145 points right if it's uh you know it starts about 150 if you get a unit that's under costed they tend to be like 100 to 125 and if they're over costed they tend to be like 200 to 250 in 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 sort of jam i'm not talking about like great demons and other things like that i'm just yeah. talking about like you know, a squad of uh, eight berserkers or a squad of like uh, I know um, shining spears or something like that you know you, you get you get used to it and you realize that your list is built up of like maybe 10 probably between seven and ten main components that yeah. all cost around that kind of point level okay. so when you start investing like 600 points into one unit you start thinking well I could have had two three four other units for this and am I getting the balance okay. and when you write lots of lists you get used to that really so. yeah and one last thing spam or not uh, well, if you find a dirt cheap unit, do you suggest spamming it? Um, no, I think that's a really hard question. Because you, you always you always text me, like, oh, have I just brought 150 plague bearers? Well, you did that one actually. Um, <laughs> but actually, I, I, I've spammed the, the, them the, a lot. The, the, there's, I, there's pros and cons to it, isn't it? So either yeah. you, either yes, you you essentially turn yourself into a rock paper scissors list at that point, where you can deal with 90 percent of the field out there. But yeah. if someone comes up to the answer to say like fire warriors yeah if someone brings a billion bolter shots with their custodian's jet bike you may get murdered or if someone exactly. yeah if someone has the answer to what your your problem you just is. you just mentioned the rock paper scissors there and actually it's not something we talked in our sort of pre-game chat but i definitely think uh, to a pre-video chat but i definitely think it's something we should mention you will write rock paper scissors lists it's, it's almost impossible to write a list that's going to do well competitively and not be a rock paper scissors list yeah. you will come up against somebody something eventually that will table you yeah. um, but what you're trying to do is just playing in the meta or the type of games that you're going to play and the people you're going to play against deciding if your rock is likely to come up yeah. you know like I, i've and been playing elder flyers and i've been playing loads of knights and they just absolutely stomp on knights because they can't move they can't shoot and it's just brilliant but i play against like horde and i struggle because i don't have enough shots well horde's coming into the meta now really and yeah. i can see it a lot more so i can't really be playing that list much more if i think i'm going to win but when knights with the meta absolutely that's the list to play because it's the scissors to the rock etc etc so cool. yeah right buddy i think that's all we've got time for this week what's going to be our next week's chat um uh, i think we want to talk about um pre-game planning really awesome talk let's about do that matchups and, and what what to write down before you go into lists uh, before you go into games so you know you're going to win it awesome that sounds good see you later cool. buddy see you later bye